How you doing everybody? This is Jim Buck with Black Shoes Campers of Southern California out of the city of industry. And today, I'm gonna to give you an interior walkthrough of our flagship model, the HQ19. So let's get into this, let's get going. Okay, so now we're gonna go inside of our HQ19. So when we open up the door here, there's a couple things right here, right off the bat, that I need to make sure I point out. Let me get, I'm gonna go ahead and prop our door open. Well, one of the first things obviously is our steps, our electric steps. We have a switch right here. You activate the switch and our steps come out. So in order to put, this, the, the put them away, you just activate the switch, the steps go away. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and put them out real quick. Now, one of the other really cool features that I, I really enjoy, I like about this unit, and most all of our HQ models have it now, is there's a light underneath the steps right here. So that way, when you're gonna go out for the evening, you turn on your light and that's this switch right here. You turn on your light and you can leave. Now, you don't have to worry about this light draining your battery because, and I'm gonna show you here, so if you can see the light, when you close this door, the light actually shuts off. So there's a sensor that shuts off the light. So that way, when you get back, you open the door, that light turns on. So it's a really nice feature so that way you have light for when you come back. So let's go ahead, we'll take a step inside. So here we are in the front of our HQ19 in the queen bed area. We have a really nice, large, like I said, queen bed area, nice mattress in here. We got some nice bedding in here as well. But we have some really nice cabinetry when it comes to like our closets. It's a really deep, very large cabinet, little nice closet. Again, it's, it's got a really good depth to it. It's really nice. There's a lot of room in there. Then we also have a couple of cabinets higher up above that. So again, you can put your personal belongings, your things in there. Um, as you come down in the bed, we have this really nice uh, stitched uh, headboard with a, a diamond design there. It's a faux leather. It's a marine grade faux leather. So it's really nice, heavy, durable quality uh, when it comes to uh, the faux leather. And then we also have a reading light on each side. And I'll actually get into the, the functionality of the reading lights and some of the features of those reading lights. So this is our front bed area. Now next to it, we also have in the cabinets, we also have a drawer here. If we can get this open here. We have a drawer, a nice little drawer, and it's got a soft catch. So you can kind of push it closed hard, but it's gonna catch and it's gonna close it nice and soft. Um, we have a cabinet here, just to get some more storage area. Then we have another cabinet over here. Now the cabinet over here, there's a little bit more to it because there are some things in regards to the TV. So we have our coax plugs, um, we have our power, and I'm gonna get in here, this is our power for our antenna. So now we have the power to our antenna on. I have the green light on, there's a little black button in there you can't quite see. And then you have the two plugs. Now those two plugs there, those will work off of the inverter. So when you turn on your inverter, the plugs are gonna, are gonna control the function for your TV and it's gonna turn on your microwave as well. So underneath your bed, at the base of your bed, you have a couple different things. Now, for some of you in the cold areas, the most important part is gonna be our 16,000 BTU furnace there at the base. And then next to that is gonna be an open compartment. You open this up, maybe you can put some shoes in there you know dirty shoes clean shoes whatever kind of shoes or whatever you want to use that storage for but we have our storage compartment underneath the bed there and as we come back up if we look up in the front back in the front on the ceiling you notice we have our speaker that's one of two speakers inside the unit we have one at the front we have our puck led lighting on the roof there and then we're going to continue up and we're going to get into our hatch and so we have this very large hatch it's really nice um, and it has a couple of different functions to it now one of the nice functions that we have is we have our led lighting that's attached to it turn that on turn that off now right now we have the hatch open um there's you know we're not being bothered by any bugs or anything right now but if you get into bugs <laughs> annoying you oops this one then we have our bug screen that will go that can go all the way across it just comes back it will attach to this other side, which is a privacy screen. So again, this will also slide all the way across and then you have your privacy screen for nighttime. Um, so that way it's darkened out. Now with the hatch we have right here, this is the locking latch for it. You have this bar. So you pull this bar down, okay? You're gonna unlatch it and that releases it. So you just push it up. There's a couple hydraulic arms on each side that help to raise it up. Now this is full height raised up. Now, if you don't want full height, for whatever reason, 
you take this bar and you pull it down and there's like a little ah, like a little carriage that will rest in right here and then there's a little black clip right here black clip pulls around this one pulls around and helps to lock this bar in place so you don't have to have it open up all the way all the time so as we continue up we look over here a little bit we also have our antenna so this is our antenna controller. Now I already turned on the switch earlier. You saw me do that in this compartment. Um, and so there's adjustments. So you would squeeze the little clip right here, squeeze that so that way you can adjust it. Otherwise it makes that noise. Now, if you want more information on our antenna and how it all functions, if you make sure you check out our library, the YouTube library for official Black Series US, you can see I talk about our King high definition antenna and you can find out more information there so here at the end of our kitchen area if you look up here we have our thermostat control and that's for our heater that's again down on the floor underneath the bed so that's one of the important parts for our heater as we come down we have our tv this is a dvd player okay i believe it's a 24 inch tv i think it is it's on a bracket moves around kind of cool um, as you come down a little bit farther onto the side of our cabinet, we have our thermostat control for the heat pad that is under their general water tank. So under our general water tank, our 50 gallon tank, we have a heat pad that is thermostatically controlled. This is the thermostat for it. So that way we can keep from freezing our general water tank. So that way we still have water source. And then this is um, one of our GFI plugs. Again, this is another plug that works off of your 30 amp service. This is not gonna work off of your inverter, okay? As we come back up, we'll go a little on the high side. We have our microwave. And again, our microwave is gonna work off of our inverter. Our microwave and our TV both work off of our inverter. We come along, we got the top cabinet, just storage cabinet, got some nice room up in here. As we come along here, we also have our command center. We have our control area. And so this is gonna be where we control different things. We have our breakers. This is all our breakers to reset um, different appliances, kitchen appliances, uh, stuff like that if there's an issue or problem. We have our general water pump and our drinking water pump switches. So this is how you can turn your water pump on. Then we have our gauges for the different tanks. So our general water tank, our drinking water tank, our gray and our black tank. Um, we have our switch for our hot water heater, remember our six gallon hot water heater. Um, one is for propane and the other one is to run off electricity. Now that electricity is not gonna be inverter, that's gonna be off your 30 amp service. And then we have our electric meter. So it shows how much voltage uh, is in our battery right now, 1235, how much current, how much power, how much energy. Um, so this is how much amperage we're using right now. We're using 13.68 amps. So again, our batteries that are in the unit we have four batteries in this unit, four AGM, and each battery has 100 amp hours. Um, so that's 400 amp hours, obviously, once we tile it in. And right now we're using 13.73 amp hours a minute, okay? So that's what we're dealing with on our, 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 our readout right there. As we come down, let's kind of go back a little bit and we'll show the, the start of our kitchen area. So we have our utility drawer. Okay. Again, with our soft clothes. And then we have a couple of really nice, really deep storage cabinets and a drawer. Uh, we have our sink. Now again, our sink has two spigots. And I talked earlier about having a separation between your water and your, your general water and your drinking water. So this faucet is gonna be your water. Okay, it's gonna be your general water. This, this little that tab right here, you flip that, that's our drinking water. So you can see, there's two openings right here. This is your general water, this is your drinking water. So again, it's separate tanks, separate hoses, separate pumps, and separate spigots that the water's gonna come out of. That way you're getting your filtered water. So let's take a look underneath our sink right here. And as you look, so at the bottom there, at the very, very bottom, you see our mixing valve. So that is, so that way, that's where cold water and hot water comes in, that way, if the water is too hot, you can control that mixing valve so that way you're not going to burn yourself with water that's too terribly hot. As we look in here, if we look on the back wall right here, that's our triple fill, our triple filtration system. So you can see how the water comes in, that blue line goes through the system, and then it comes through the filter that cuts up and gives you your drinking water. 
So again, a lot of, a lot of features happening underneath the sink right here. As we continue along up here, we have our uh, window, so that way we can have some ventilation. So again, to release that, you just lift this clip up, that slides down, that slides up, and we have our window. So as long as I'm here, I'm gonna show you a window real quick. You already saw me open and close it a little bit, and I'm gonna close it. Now on our window, we actually have two locks. You can see these two prongs, these two teeth. Now, let's say you wanna close your window, but you still want a little bit of airflow. Um, and so maybe you're going down the road or whatever, you wanna keep the air flowing through it. So if you go to the middle one, the middle setting, there's still a gap in here. And so you would do that with all of your locks, all three of the locks, and that allows air to still kind of flow through the window. Now, let's say you're gonna close it up. You don't want any more airflow. You're gonna to wanna to lock it up. You pull it in, you go over the back side of that tooth, you notice I can't get my finger in there anymore. And so that's how you're gonna lock the window tight, okay, for security reasons or you know whatever it is you can be using it for. But that's how our window locks work. Right here we have this nice prep area or a storage area or a serving area, whatever you want this to be, but this is a nice large cabinet area. If you're gonna use your stove, then what you do is you're gonna lift this cover up out of the way, covers out of the way. Then there's a lid. This is the lid for your stove. Do not use this as, as your cooking surface. You want to lift this up. This lifts up, opens up out of the way. And so then we have a three burner stove here in place on top of our counter here. Okay. So again, make sure this is not to be down while you are cooking. You want to make sure that it's, you know, opened up. So close that down. We're going to close that down because underneath this is going to be our oven. So only two, right now only two of our units actually have an oven. That would be our HQ19 and our HQ21. So here's our oven space, okay? It's got a light in there, nice little typical camping oven. Um, I, I don't know if you're necessarily gonna be cooking a turkey in there, but it's a decent sized little space for doing cooking. Then we have another cabinet down here. So we have more storage down here, maybe some pots, maybe some pans, whatever it is you wanna store down underneath there, as well as a gas shut off close this. Another nice feature we have right here is our pantry. So this is a slide out pantry. So this is going to pull out or a pull out pantry, slide out pantry. So we can fit some, some nice food items here on our slide out pantry. You know, push this back in here. And then another, we'll start down here because this is obviously a refrigerator down underneath here. Now, if you can, you know, squeeze a look in here and see, and what you'll see is two water pumps. You'll see the outside filler hoses, um, so, which I showed on the exterior video. You have outside filler hoses, the water goes into the tanks from there. And again, you show, or you can see the two water pumps, um, one for the shower and the sink and the toilet, and the other one for your drinking water, as well as another gas line shut off underneath this compartment. So as we come back up here, we have our refrigerator. We have our freezer in the top portion with our controls up here, okay? And then you come in here for the lower portion and we have our really nice, there's two shelves in here. Well, technically three if you count the top of this one. A three shelf refrigerator with a couple drawers here. Really nice size refrigerator for this very large unit. So here we are, or here you are, in the back bathroom area. It's a dry bath, which means we have a separate toilet and a separate shower. And there's a lot of features that are really popular in the back of this unit. Um, one of the features is this sliding door. We have this door that separates the, the bathroom area from the rest of the caravan. And so we have this really nice lock that's up here. And so it's a flip lock, so I'll push this over. If you flip this down, you can see the pin go up and it helps lock this door in place, which we're definitely what you wanna be doing when you're traveling. There's a couple of, of towel racks that are hanging on this door. And again, this works off of a slider. This will slide over and close. Now, some of the other features that you will see here is again, our toilet. You see the toilet, nice flush toilet. As you come up, you can even see the window. There's a nice window. And above that, you see a vent and it's a lighted vent. And that's one of the nice things. So there's actually two switches there. Um, so you, even though the area is lit up, you can have those lights as well. Now, just to the left of the toilet, we see our washing machine. That is a seven gallon capacity washing machine. So it's not a lot of water, it's not a lot of space, but it's enough to, you know, maybe wash some socks and some underwear, maybe a couple shirts. Um, but again, you're not gonna be doing a full, full load like what you may do at home. You also have another GFI plug that's there along that back wall. Um, again, that's another plug that would work off of a 30 amp service. It's not gonna work 
off of your inverter. So as we continue up, we come into our cabinetry. Um, there are three really nice storage cabinets above the sink area. So that way you can put towels or whatever it is you'd like to store up in there or your toiletries. Um, there's a nice big black splash of a mirror there that covers everything. But even then there's still a nice small vanity mirror attached to the wall right here on the very end, right by the switches that actually control the lighting in the back area. Now there is a light over the sink and that is actually a touch light. It's not attached to the rest of the switches. So you would just touch it right in the middle, the light would come on, you touch in the middle again, the light would go off. Now on the sink area, like I said, that I mentioned, there is a large porcelain sink. This is not like a plastic sink you're gonna find in most campers. This is a porcelain sink. You're gonna find this in like Home Depot and stores like that. Um, and so that's one of the really nice features. Beneath the sink, we also have more drawers and cabinetry for storage with a soft closed touch to it. Now, as we turn around and we look, we get into our shower area. Now, one of the nice things is the shower is a very large area. It is a single piece of, uh, uh, not porcelain, but plastic. It's a single, not plastic, it is fiberglass, sorry. It is a single sheet of fiberglass that covers from the top to the bottom. And one of the really nice features is this door. Um, we no longer have that pull-out door. We're utilizing this accordion style door. The track is inside the shower. So all the water that would be dripping is gonna be dripping and staying inside the shower. When you look at the shower head, um, the shower head is on a nice uh, platform that slides up and down for adjustments. Um, and then you also have another lighted vent inside the shower. Uh, so that way you have uh, the ability to remove steam or just be lighted up while you're in there showering. Now, one last thing that I wanted to point out over the sink or actually the stove area here, now that I have everything closed up, a very important piece of equipment is your vent and stove fans, okay? So it's two switches on it, one turns on the lights and the other one turns on the fan. Whenever you're cooking, you should turn on your fans so that way you're not holding all of the heat within the unit. Now I know you do have a window here, but again, you're gonna have another door in front of that. So it is important for using this fan to draw the heat and anything out of the unit to protect you. So here on this side of the trailer, which is where our dinette is, again, we have more cabinetry here. We have some more nice storage space to here. There's a, a few things here and here we have, uh, you know, our filter uh, remover for our water. Um, but we have three really nice sized cabinets. You can put food products or uh, again, whatever you want to put in here. But we have our cabinetry. Down here at the end of our cabinetry, we have our radio. Now our radio is going to work our speakers. Again, we have two speakers in here. We have one at the front. We have one at the back behind the air conditioning unit. I'll show you that in a second. But we also have our speakers outside. So the function for our radio to get our inside outside is going to be working off of the fade. Um, whether it be front to back fade or side to side fade, that's how you're gonna get to work your outside speakers. Above that, we have our Ames Power Satellite Switch. This is our inverter switch, our 2000, uh, 2000 watt inverter. And so there's three switches on it. Now, I do have a video on our library um, dealing with the solar panels and the inverter, but I, I always like to make sure I cover this real quick. There are three switches. Inverter off, inverter on, and power saver auto. Do not, do not, do not use power saver auto. That is for technician use. Don't put it on that, don't leave it on that, don't use that, again, for technician use. You're only gonna use off and on. Now, the only time this needs to be on is a couple different reasons. One, you're gonna watch TV. Two, you're gonna use your microwave. Three, you're turning on the inverter to charge your battery because the inverter doubles as a converter. So that's gonna be your battery charger when you are plugged into a 30 amp service. So that's the only times you need to have it on. Otherwise you turn it back off or if you're gonna be you know, using it for, again, for another appliance. So for instance, now let me show you with the inverter on the wall right here, and I've already showed you a couple of other GFI plugs this one is the inverter plug, as it says right here, inverter. So let's say here in this kitchen area, you're gonna make some coffee with a coffee maker. You would plug into this, you would turn on your inverter very simply, push the button on, you're gonna get your lights lighting up, 
you hear the microwave kick on, and then a yellow light's gonna come on. Now, if you are on battery power, the yellow light is fine, because if you read it, it says inverter on battery priority. So it's telling you, you're working off of your batteries. The next one up, the green one says battery charger. So what that means is you're plugged into a shoreline or you're plugged into a generator, you're utilizing your 30 amp service, and now that your inverter is charging your batteries, okay? So that's when the switches need to be in those positions. Let me switch this off right here. So as we come down on our wall, we have several switches. Now, the first switch right here, this nice big one right here, that is your cutoff switch. It's gonna turn off all the power to the coach. So when I push that, it turns off all of our power. Turn it back on. Then we have a three switch. Now the switch, it only pivots one way and that's this way. And these control the lights inside the unit as well. So again, you have your LED strip light, then you have your puck lights here, and then you have your puck lights at the front of the, ca the caravan. These are rocker switches. Now these control the floodlights on the front, the back, and on the sides, okay? So again, you front, say, for instance, you push that front, the front light comes on, you push it rear, the back light comes on, and so on and so forth, all right? As we travel along, we have our reading light. Now, right now it's on, it's a touch button, I'm gonna turn it off. So to turn it on, you touch the button and it gives you a little blue ambient light. So you can use that as a night light. You touch it again, our reading light comes on. Now, here's the thing. Eh, maybe this reading light is too bright. You touch and hold the button and it becomes a dimmer switch. You see it get dim there. Release, touch the button again and hold it and it gets brighter. So that's one of the really cool features about these reading lights, having that dimmer switch or the make a brighter switch. Again, I already pointed out our inverter plug. Here we have another marine grade 12 volt plug. And so the nice part about this one is this one has a dual setting. So I'm gonna step back out of the way here. So this one has a uh, lighter style plug to it, while the other one has two USB plugs attached to it there. All right. Now, as we come along in here, here we have another window. We have another window in this area right here. Okay. Now, with the dinette, we already have the dinette in a bed configuration, a sleeping configuration. We have an inverter here, we got batteries here. So I'm gonna lift up the pad and I'm gonna show you the inverter. Again, this is the 2000 watt inverter. Pull this up out of the way. This little lid here lifts. And so there is our inverter. Now, if you get notice, the inverter switch is in the off position. That's where you want that, in the off position, okay? So let's close this up here. I'm gonna slide this back here and come over here. And this is where our battery is, or our batteries, I should say. Pull that out of the way, lift this up. Now again, if you can count, if you look, you see in here, we got one, two, three, and four batteries in the HQ19. We have a few different fuses, an inverter fuse, a solar control fuse, a control panel fuse, and a towing vehicle fuse. And so right here against this wall, we also have our charge controller. So that way we're not overcharging our batteries. And then right here in the middle, this is our full-blown battery cutoff switch. So you flip this and it shuts off all power to the batteries. So that way we're keeping our batteries protected, maybe while we're storing it or whatever we want to do. But this is going to be our battery compartment down in here. All right. Now for our bed, let's slide this back in place. In order to not make it a bed and a dinette, you actually take these two pads off. Now there's actually Velcro on the ends right here. Now the nice thing is, the nice little touch, and I love the fact that they did this. They took an extra strip. This is the rough side of the Velcro. Well, as you know, whenever you have Velcro, you always, at least I know for me, I end up scraping my knuckles against a darn thing, and then I was ah, I hurt, right? So they actually attached an extra strip to it so when you're storing it, you can cover it. So that way you're not you know, getting it caught on anything or scratching yourself, which is a really nice feature. When you need it, you peel this off and then you stick these two pieces of Velcro together. Now, to make the bed, or excuse me, to make the bed into a table, we have to you know, raise it up, lower it down, whatever we're gonna do. Now on this table, there is a clamp. Here's the pivot, this is the pivot side, and here's the clamp side. So this actually raises up. You can see that, you can hear it. 
So then you pull, it swivels up, you pull it up the rest of the way, and make sure you lock it in place, okay? So now, and I, I like to give it a little pullback, make sure it is locked. So now we have our table configuration, okay? So to make it a bed, put it in bed configuration, you come back here. Now, if you notice, real quick, I put my arm here, because what I'm doing is I'm pushing this way, because otherwise, if you come this way, if you lean on it, you can't really get the clamp out. It makes it harder. So give it a little push, release that clamp, it swivels down, and locks back in place. Then you take your two pads, and you make a bed out of it. Now, one of the features in dealing with our dinette area here is going to be our leg rest. Now, in some units, you might find a storage door, but because of our use of our inverter and our batteries, we don't have that. So this actually is a leg rest. So this will lift up and there's a, a couple of brackets underneath that will help to lock this in place. There we go. We get it locked in place. So again, this is not a seat. This is a leg rest. So if you sit sideways with your legs dangling off this way, even maybe while you're watching some TV, you can kick up you know, your legs and relax a little bit. To release it, you just reach underneath, find that bracket, and then just lower it back down, push it right back into place. And over here, I wanna make sure I point out that this high gloss veneer, this is not a sticker, it's not wallpaper. This is actual wood a slice of wood, is wood veneer, attached to a Malaysian cabinet, a Malaysian uh, honeycomb wood. So that way we have this beautiful high gloss sheen and as well as this nice grainy wood look. And the same thing for the floor as well, for the linoleum on the floor, we have a nice grain linoleum floor. So that way, again, you have more of that outside camping, boondocking feeling. And one thing I'd like to show you underneath here too, and I had mentioned in the back, there was the touch lights. So you have another touch light here over this kitchen sink too. So again, you just touch it in the center and you turn it on and off. So as I'm walking back, I'm gonna get back here to the air conditioner. You can notice I have some headroom. Height clearance in this unit is six foot three inches. Now, obviously as I get to the air conditioner, it's a little less than that, but six foot three. So if you're six three and over or six four and up, you're gonna be running into a little bit of a head issue. Now, with some of the other measurements that we have, we also have a length of about 26 feet going from the poly block all the way to the rear with the spare tires, 26 feet. Now, gross, or excuse me, the dry weight for this unit, you're gonna come in at about 6,448 pounds with a gross vehicle weight of 10,000 pounds for what can be allowed to be towed in this unit. So let's get into this. We're talking about the air conditioner here as I move my head back a little bit. This is our air conditioning unit. It's not uh, you know, tubed, it's not vented. It comes out right here. You open up these vents right here and so that's gonna allow for air discharge at the sides, the rear, and then the front as well. And so then you have your controller up here. You have just a fan control. If you just wanna turn on the fan without the air conditioner, you can do that. You can turn on the air conditioner. You have a vent control here on the top. And then you have a speed controller here for your fan or a thermostat, I should say, a thermostat for here. So you have your intake and your discharges here on your air conditioner. Well, with that in mind, I think that just about wraps everything up for this HQ19. So what I would like to say is thank you for joining us today. This is going to be our interior walkthrough. And so I hope you, uh, I was able to answer any questions you may have about the interior. If you have any questions, be sure to hit us up with a question, info at blackseriescamper.com. Be sure to check out the rest of our videos on official Black Series Camper US on our YouTube channel there, official one. And again, this is Jim Buck, Black Series Campers of Southern California out of the city industry inside the HQ19 saying, take care everybody, we'll see you out there. How you doing everybody? This is Jim Buck with Black Series Campers of Southern California out of the city of industry. And we hope that you enjoyed the last video of a series that we just got finished watching. And what we'd like to do is we'd like to ask to make sure that you please like and subscribe to our channel so that way you can see all of the videos that are coming up in our series. So make sure that you get out there, you smash that bell up in that corner up there. And again, this is Jim Buck with Black Series Camper. So we hope you enjoyed that video. Take care everybody, have a great day.